Hey guys, if you want to learn how to build a page like this in Elementor Pro, then this video is for you. I've already showed this design in two tutorials. Uh, one tutorial being the new hotspot widget of Elementor. And one tutorial where I showed you how to create this blur header. Uh, these videos are both linked in the description if you want to check them out. But people also wanted me to make a video about the whole design of this page. And I thought that would be a pretty cool video and it would be a great practice if you want to learn how to build uh, cool websites with Elementor Pro. I'm going to show you how I would do it. So if that sounds interesting to you, then keep watching. Okay, so the only thing that we already have is that blur header, uh, but this is a new page, a blank page for Elementor Pro. And before we're going to click and try to do everything, what you first should do is look at your design and then think about how you would structure it before you're actually going to build it, because that will save time. So what is this? Well, first of all, it's a big background, a background with some blur, as you can see. It has an image that overlays onto the next section, two text and a button, and that's actually it. So let's just start with that one section and two columns. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to select the two columns and then first we're going to give it some height because we need room for that video uh, for the section. Put it on minimum height and we're going to put this at 850. Now we have enough room for the video. Make sure that the column gaps are off because Elementor always adds a little bit of padding in here which I don't like because then it's not aligned to all the other items. And now let's first insert our video. So we're going to go to style and then uh, we're going to go to video. So here we can place a YouTube link, but on the final website, the video, if you reload the page, it plays instantly. And when you use a YouTube link, it needs to load first. So what you can also do is paste in a link here that is actually hosted on your own website. So how you do that is to go back to your dashboard then go to media and then make sure that you upload your mp4 in here just dump it in over here from your finder right so this is the video you're going to dump it here then you click on the video you get a preview here and this is the link you're going to copy there's a button here or you can double click and then copy it then you go back to your page and you paste that video link in here and then it starts to play the video instantly how cool is that now on the final website we also have a blur over here and that makes this part more visible so what we can do now is go to background overlay then click on gradients you don't see anything yet but we need to play with the colors to actually see what we're doing so i've already set up some colors you can of course set up your global colors inside of the site settings so for this website i've already prepared something so uh, some colors i've inserted them over here and some fonts so for example the primary font over here is sora that's the font you can see right here actually this is also sora it's all a Google font called Sora. So to make my life easier, I've already set up the fonts over here. So whenever I drag in a title or a text, it already looks the way I want. So I'm going to exit here. I'm going to go back to my section. So now that we've inserted the video, we can go to background overlay. And here we can create that gradient. So what I always do is start out with some colors that you can clearly see. So for example, uh, super green and red. So now you can see that red is on the bottom and green is on the top. But we want to have that gradient that is like this. So we need the radial for that. So if you select li uh, linear to radial, you can see that now the green is in the middle. And if you then put the position in the top right, you can put the green over here. Let's now increase it. So make sure you almost don't see the guy. So something like this. You can also change the location. So maybe make it a little bit more intense. Something like this. So when you have your item over here, it's much more visible because this is 85% opacity. And now if we decrease the opacity from this one to zero, you can see that we now have this cool glow. That looks pretty cool. So now we only have to change this color to the color of our design. And now you can see that the video is just in that corner. Really cool. So now we can easily add items. And if the items are not visible enough, we can change the opacity or change the location. So now let's add some things. I'm gonna add a header first. Uh, I'm gonna make an H1. I've already set that up, like I said, in the site 
settings. That's why it has this styling. I'm gonna insert a text. The text on the uh, website that I've set up is gray because gray is the color that I use most often. So here I need to change the color. So I'm gonna put that on white. And then to create this cool gradient button, we also have a little trick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a normal button like this, it's not styled yet. So what you need to do, first set it on medium because it's a little bit bigger, then we can go to icon and it has this play button, but you can insert any icon that you want. I'm gonna give it some spacing. It's not perfectly middle aligned and there is no such setting for this, which I don't really like. So what I normally do is just change the line height a bit to make it align a little bit better. It's not a perfect solution, but it works. There you go. Okay, it's bold. And now for the colors, we're gonna go to gradients. And now we can select two colors again. So here, if we change this to a random color like this, you can see that the gradient pops up. Now, you don't want to change it to radial. You want to change the angle because right now it's 180 degrees. So that is from top to bottom. So if you put it at 90, it becomes this gradient. It looks really cool. But these colors are way too intense. So we're going to change this to the colors of the actual of our design. All right, something like this. That looks cool. Now we're going to increase the border radius to make the button rounded. And as you can see, this button still has more padding. Uh, you can also increase that over here. So for example, put uh, a 30 on all sides. <laughs> that doesn't look good. So unlink it and make sure that the top and the bottom are not too high. So for example, 15 or 18. And then the sides, you can make them a lot bigger. And that always makes a button look nice. And now, since we've set up the padding ourselves, the button size option doesn't really apply. So if you put it back to small, the only thing that will change is the actual size of the icon and the text. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, let's now add in our big image and see how we can overlap that to the next section. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag in an image like this. And the image that we're gonna work with is this image. It already has uh, some padding on the left and it has a blur, as you can see, inside of the design. So this blur is exported within that PNG. I'm gonna select that PNG that I have imported with that blur. Okay, so now to make it overlap, we're gonna go straight to the advanced tab to positioning and then go to custom then we're going to give this a width of 1000 and then put the positioning on absolute and in that way you can play with it a little bit more because now you can drag it to the position that you want so as you can see it's still not the right size so we also need a little trick over here go to style then put this on pixels and then also increase this to a thousand and now it's the, the right size. You wanna to go to positioning and now position it like you want it. So now it's massive and it already hangs on to the next section. Okay, so we're almost done with the header. I forgot one thing and that is to style the button a little bit more because on the final website we have a hover and the, the gradient flips. Uh, that's pretty cool. So how you can do that is go to the style of the button, then go to hover, then put this one on gradient as well and then make sure to use the same colors. So drag in, copy and paste the same color. And now the gradient is horizontal, so we need to change the angle again. So we had it on 90, so now nothing will change. So then we need 90 plus 180, and that is, of course, 270. And now it flips. And then the last thing that I did is put it on shrink. So in that way, you have this nice little effect. It may be, maybe it's a little bit too intense, but it's a nice feature. All right, we're now done with the hero. This was the most difficult section. Okay, now for this section, I'm not going to explain all the little widgets because you know how to drag in a text from now, right? That's not very hard. So I'm not going to show you how to create a title. But what I want to say is that this main section is uh, two columns. And then within this column, there is an intersection. So we have two columns inside of this column, which is part of the main section. If this sounds really complicated for you, I have a basics video on sections uh, and columns and margin and padding, uh, which you can watch. It's now in the card and in the description. Uh, so if this is uh, too fast for you, then you should watch that video. But I think for most people, they already know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click on the plus over here. I'm gonna create a section with two columns. 
For this section, I won't use a minimum height. I'm just gonna work with uh, padding. So I'm gonna add uh, some padding to the bottom, 150, some padding to the top. Let me first drag in some titles. Okay, so for the title, I've also used a little trick to make sure that this will always be on the next line so I don't have to mess with paddings. How you can do that is by adding the uh, a brr in here. <laughs> so a, a break. Uh, that is HTML. It works inside of this title field. It's useful sometimes. And then for this section, it's just an intersection with two titles, an icon. Uh, that icon, by the way, also has a gradient, but I didn't make that an Elementor. I added that gradient inside of Adobe XD, and then I exported it into an SVG uh, that already has that gradient inside of it. So if you're going to work with icons, I suggest using SVG uh, because that works inside of Elementor and it's vector, so it's unlimited sharp. So just an icon i've imported an icon upload svg uploaded my own icon just a title and a text okay so now for this part uh, that rotates when you start scrolling uh, that is also a png uh, so what, what i want to do is drag in an image like this i'm gonna select that image and that is this image. And now if you go to the advanced tab, click on motion effects. This is where it becomes fun. You're going to go to scrolling effects and then go to rotate because we want it to rotate when it scrolls. So if you now scroll, you already see that it happens. If you increase the speed, so for example, put it on five, it's way too intense. And now I see that my image is not perfectly middle aligned. So that looks a little bit weird. Maybe I'm going to put it at two, for example, that looks better. And that's actually all you need to do for that. Super easy and cool effect in Elementor. So that's all you need to know for this section. So two columns, one intersection with SVG icons and an image that has a motion effect. Now for the last section of our uh, page, we have this cool image that also has a radial gradient and that is not inside of the image. So the original image is this. So I added the gradient inside of Elementor. Let's see how that is done. So what you want to do is you want to create a new section like this. For now, we're just going to use the minimum height. Let's just put it on 850 as well. We're going to go to style. Now select the image, choose the image that you want. So the, the normal image, click on it. Now we're going to go to background overlay, click on the gradient. Now select two colors that you can clearly see as always, green and red. Well, I'm not going to use red because it's also red in this image so green and blue put this at radial and now the middle we want that transparent so this is center centered because the the gradient is on the outside okay so put the green on transparent like this and now for this color i want to use the same color that i used in the header and now if you increase the opacity it's not really clear it's also not 100 transparent and that is because you need to play with the location so what i suggest you actually do is first play with the locations with the, the green color so let's just put it back as, as green first play with the location make sure that if you put this at 100 that the outside is not visible anymore so something like this because that's what you want okay and now put the green on zero and now as you can see it has that that nice glow you can of course increase it by doing that and this hotspot feature i already explained that in uh in the hotspot tutorial so the only thing you might want to know is how to create this button an outline button so let me show you how to do that so if you're gonna drag in a button like this you have just a default style. So what I suggest you do is grab your button that you already made and put it in here. Now delete this one. Let's just middle align it. Now go to style. We don't want a background in the button, but we want a border. A border on the outside, for example, two pixels, but then it's automatically gray. So we actually want a background, but then a transparent background. And that is how you can create a transparent background. Now, of course, just delete the gradient and then it should work. And you already know how to import a title and a little text. And like I said, this part is explained in the other tutorial. So that's actually all you need to know. Now you know how to create this whole page I hope that you liked this video. It's just a little practice. If you want me to make more videos like this, just some cool designs, just some, uh, some cool tricks, let me know. Give me some new ideas and I will make a new video. That's it. And if you want more videos like this, then you can subscribe if you want to. And then hopefully I will see you in the next video.